Aside from his call into the prophetic office, Ezekiel is probably most famous for his visit to the Valley of Dry Bones. This is in chapter 37, and it's one of the more gruesome events that he relates. Ezekiel is taken by God to this wide valley that's covered in the bones of the unburied dead. Dry, disarticulated bones scattered about, not a complete skeleton in sight. And God asks if these bones can live. Ezekiel's been a prophet for a while now, so he's not dumb enough to shoot off a smart aleck reply like, no way, these are as dead as they can be, no life here. Instead, he wisely says, O Lord God, you know, you are God here, you can do whatever you want, even if it seems impossible to me. And that's exactly what happens. God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, to speak his living and active word over these dry, dusty bones and bring them back to life. And prophesy he does. I can't imagine the sound of all of those bones rattling around and reconnecting to their rightful neighbors re-articulating into skeletons, then ligaments and tendons and organs and muscles regrowing, and then flesh and skin. Wow. The floor of the valley, once covered in dry, dusty bones, is now covered in silent bodies. Now what? Once more, prophesy, God says. Speak breath into them. And he does, and they live. So what's the point of this biblical horror story? Why is something so ghastly in Holy Scripture? Because of what it means for God's people, for you. It is to remind the exiles that God has not forgotten them, that he will not only rescue them from this exile, But on the last day, on the day of the Lord, he will raise them from death to life everlasting in his presence for all of eternity. Such is the care of the Lord God for his people. Even when it seems hopeless, even when it seems that there's no chance for rescue or recovery, the living word of God speaks life into his people and he revives them to live forever. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.